Seasonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from Kit Guru, and today we have a really interesting cooler on test. It's the AlphaCool Ice Bear Extreme. Now, if you come across AlphaCool in the past, it's probably because you have maybe a little bit of experience with custom water cooling uh, rather than necessarily AIO units. For a while now, AlphaCool have been introducing products under their Ice Bear range, uh, which are aimed to kind of bridge the gap between maintenance free and custom loops. These pre-built, pre-filled units share a lot in common with custom water cooling loops, uh, primarily in that they are sort of rebuildable or expandable. The extreme in the name suggests that AlphaCool are actually taking this to sort of a whole new level, and with the AlphaCool Ice Bear Extreme priced at £226.79, it's going to be interesting to see how. So, let's take a look. Uh, for starters, the box is absolutely huge, which provides a bit of an indication as to what you can expect inside. Opening the box up, we find a pretty comprehensive book of instructions and a large set of mounting hardware and accessories. The cooler itself is surrounded by lots of pieces of foam padding to prevent any chance of damage during transportation. Taking the cooler out of the box, first thought, it's absolutely huge. The radiator for the Ice Bear Extreme is a 280mm version, so initially I had been expecting the cooler to be a little bit larger than 240mm, but I genuinely wasn't expecting this. The radiator's dimensions come in at 385.5 by 156 by 64 millimeters, and when compared to a standard 280 millimeter radiator, it's clear there's quite a bit more to this cooler than just a radiator. Sitting next to a 240 millimeter radiator at 278 by 124 by 30 millimeter, it absolutely dwarfs it. The main bulk of the cooler does include the radiator, but also the Ice Bear Extreme's fans, pump, and reservoir. So the CPU block, rather than housing the pump, as with lots of other AIO coolers, is just a block. This being said, I have tested coolers in the past with pumps integrated into the radiator, uh, the Antec Cooler H2OK240 being a prime example, uh, which have seemed to offer the same functionality, but in a much smaller package. This is basically the primary reason for the extreme price. Uh, the whole cooler has been built from the ground up with essentially retail custom water cooling components. Against potentially better judgment, I did decide to open the Ice Bear Extreme to get a better gauge of just how it's been put together. Breaking down what's included, you get a standalone pump, the Alpha Cool Ice Pump VPP755 V3, for fans, two Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 140mm PWM fans, and as a block, the Alpha Cool Ice Block XPX CPU block. All of the connections are also G and a quarter inch fittings, so theoretically you could swap out things like tubing or integrate the pump res radiator into an existing loop. As the Ice Bear Extreme is intended to be upgradable, a couple of quick release fittings have also been included sort of midway down the tubing, so you could very easily add, say, a graphics card if you wanted to. Really, the only part that's not kind of off the shelf is the 138ml reservoir, which is understandable considering the form factor. Essentially, the Ice Bear Extreme could be described as a frame which holds all of these key components like the pump and the reservoir together in a single package. This frame actually looks pretty good. Smooth black aluminium, with the exception of the plastic sides, looks really sleek, and a honeycomb cutout on the front and back shouldn't hinder any airflow. Just as with other Ice Bear coolers, the Extreme arrives fully assembled, topped up with fluid and tested, so in this respect it works very similarly to any other AIO. If you do intend to open and close the quick disconnect a few times though, it's likely you will lose a little bit of coolant, so AlphaCool have included a handy fill port allowing you to top up the reservoir and prevent any air pockets or bubbles from forming. You can also get a gauge of just how much coolant is in the system using the two viewports, one on either side of the cooler. Although the Ice Bear Extreme isn't decked out with loads of LED lighting, there is a small strip of blue LEDs sitting next to the reservoir to make checking on coolant levels a little bit easier. Blue, interestingly, to match the illuminated AlphaCool logo on the CPU block. So now that we've taken a look at the kit, it's on to installation. Here it's definitely worth consulting the manual. Starting with the back plate, actually this is probably the simplest stage of the process. All you need to do is fit it to the rear of your motherboard, and there are actually a couple of small adhesive tabs to hold it in place. To set up the block, you start by attaching the two-piece top mounting bracket. Both of these parts slide onto the block following a couple of grooves and click into place. To set up the mounting screws, you first take one of the included long screws and slide on first one of the springs and then second a washer. 
This whole assembly can then be passed through the mounting bracket and held in place with one of the included nuts. You essentially do need to repeat this process four times, once for each of the corners. When the CPU block is ready, you can apply your thermal compound and place the block atop your CPU, tightening down those screws. There is an instruction note in the manual insisting no tools are to be used. The mounting screws just need to be tightened down finger tight. There are also a couple of rubber caps provided which can be installed on top of these screws for a slightly cleaner aesthetic. All in all, it's a little bit more fiddly than some installations with lots of sort of smaller parts included, uh, but to some extent, it's the same sort of process as installing any standalone CPU block, uh, rather than an AIO from, say, Acertech. Installation of the radiator potentially might cause some headaches, purely because it's such an irregular size. There are mounting points on the radiator housing, and it's nice to see that there are a number of them at each point to allow for adjustment if there's any space restrictions. The Icebear Extreme is basically designed to mount horizontally on the top of your case, but if you are intending to mount it vertically, this is still possible. You just need to ensure that the reservoir is sitting beneath the radiator, rather than having the tubing coming out of the top. This is purely to ensure that the pump is constantly receiving coolant from the reservoir and doesn't run dry. When it comes to plugging everything in, there is a braided 3-pin connection running from the CPU block, but this is purely to power the built-in LED. The rest of the main connections run from the radiator itself. There's a 4-pin Molex connection for pump power, and a second 4-pin PWM connection for controlling pump speeds. The final connection, a 4-pin PWM fan connector, is for basically just that, powering the two built-in fans. Installation did only take about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, but there are quite a few more stages than other AIO coolers I've tested recently. With the cooler installed and everything plugged in, we can start some testing. At KitGuru we test CPU coolers on the Z170 platform, and for our CPU we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K. That's installed in an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. For RAM we have a single stick of 8GB Guile Evo X memory, and that's running at 3200MHz. Storage is handled by 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench, a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing we take a number of readings with the i7-7700K's turbo locked, overclocked to 4.5 GHz and 5 GHz as well. The temperatures taken are all delta T values, meaning that we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found over on kitguru.net. And on to the results! Starting at 5 GHz, the Alpha Core Icebear Extreme absolutely smokes it, with the best temperature recorded on our Z170 platform at 61.8 degrees. Truly impressive stuff, but understandable considering the better pump, higher capacity of coolant, and larger radiator surface area. Idle temps, although not the best we've seen, still very impressive, with the Icebear Extreme on par with the Thermaltake Water 30360. Over to 4.5 GHz, the Icebear Extreme drops down one spot into second place, just behind the Corsair H100i Platinum. A bit of a surprise, but considering the much higher RPM of the Corsair H100i's ML Pro fans, this does kind of make sense. Idle temps at 4.5 GHz still good at 8.6 degrees. At 4 GHz, the Icebear Extreme does drop kind of quite a bit sitting in the middle of our group. With only a difference of 2.4 degrees between the Icebear and the H100i Platinum, it's not really a massive shift, but I will say the Icebear was basically silent during our stock testing, almost like the cooler was running completely passively. Taking a look at noise, also pretty remarkable. Even under full load at 5 GHz, the Ice Bear is still one of the quietest coolers tested at 44.1 dBA, whilst also the best in performance. In this instance, larger 140mm fans are clearly helping, with the Ice Bear hanging out with a number of larger 140mm single or dual fan air coolers in fourth place. So, conclusion time. I guess it's really a case of what did I expect, and truthfully I thought the Ice Bear would be right up there. For it to be topping our tests really is great, but kind of understandable considering how high quality all the sort of individual components that make up the Icebear Extreme are. The physically larger surface area of the 280mm radiator helps hugely with performance, and the Silent Wing 3 fans impressively low audible noise. Really the only potential issue is going to be the price. At £226.79 it is certainly a dear cooler, but it's pleasing to see that rather than tacky LEDs and gimmicky features, AlphaCool have elected to go solely for quality. Running through the parts list, the CPU block, the fans, pump, radiator are all great options if you were looking to build a custom liquid cooling loop yourself. And if you consider that the Ice Pump VPP755V3 standalone is roughly £60 or so, the full price of the Ice Bear Extreme makes perfect sense. Without trading out for all aluminium parts, if you put together a components list for a loop, you'd probably be looking at roughly the same sort of price. 
Basically, Alf and Cool have done this for you whilst taking a lot of the guesswork and risk out of the equation. Now, would I recommend the Ice Bear Extreme? It's a bit of a tricky question. For someone on a budget, probably not. And the same goes for somebody who has no real interest in what they are putting or getting in their system. They just want a PC that runs until they buy a new one. The Ice Bear Extreme is a bit of a niche product, and as such, it's not going to appeal to everybody. Really, the ideal target market would be somebody who has an interest in custom water cooling, but might not want to commit just yet. In this respect, the Ice Bear Extreme is a brilliant option, with a couple of ways of expanding it down the line. Say, either reconfiguring the cooler to use some of those parts individually, or simply picking up a block for your GPU from AlphaCool and utilising the quick disconnect to add it to the loop. Either way, you actually have loads of options for expanding the AlphaCool Ice Bear Extreme as you upgrade your system. I would just make sure that your case is large enough to accommodate it. This being such a non-standard cooler, as it were, it would be great to hear your thoughts, so please make sure to leave a comment below and let us know. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like or a dislike, and if you've enjoyed this review so much that you want to see it again, please consider clicking the subscribe button below, and this way you get to watch different videos from KitGuru, uh, rather than just the same one over and over again. If you'd like to be notified of new video releases, click the bell icon as well. If you enjoy the content that we make at KitGuru, click on either links down below and check out our Patreon page, or even our new merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.